Hi and welcome back to another episode on how to hack. So over here, I have open web application security project running. So this is again a vulnerable web application server that we will be doing a penetration testing on. And what we're going to do today is really to understand all of the process and the logical steps that take place doing a normal registration, doing a normal checkout to understand the entire customer journey. So when you are entering a website for the first time, you do not go ahead and start unloading all of your payloads and pushing all your payloads and using all those different security scripts that you have created and start injecting them onto the site. That is not the first thing you do. The first thing you do is to map out the entire site. And how do you go about mapping out the entire site? How you do that is by going through what a normal user would do using a customer journey perspective, understanding where are the places, the pages, the technology, the checkout process, the user registration process, what are the scripts. So you're trying to gather as much information as you can and understand and comprehend how the entire website was built. So what do I mean by that specifically? So for example, if I go on to the top right corner and I click on account and I click on login, so over here, I can say, click on not yet a customer. So I can zoom in a little, so it's easier for you to see. So I can register a email. For example, I can just enter a an email address and I can enter the password. Okay, so I can go ahead and create the user. So what we're trying to do here is to understand the whole process for a normal user, a normal registration, a normal login, a normal checkout. And we can look, of course, and try to identify where are the areas where there could be some missing steps. There could be some places where they could have written the code poorly or incorrectly. Okay, so let's choose the security question. And of course, we can enter the answer and we can click on register. So of course it says registration completed successfully. You can now log in. So let's go ahead and log into the site. So again, we are logging into the site and we are just trying to have a look and feel of how the whole navigation process work. And I can click on to add to basket. So on the previous, on the previous tutorial, we actually went into the web developer and we look at all the application programming interfaces that was being called. So over here, we can just continue clicking at the basket and, and so on. So we try to understand how it works. So we can click onto your basket and we can see that we have two items. All right, so we can go in and click on checkout and we can add new address, for example. So I can enter, say, Singapore. So I'm from Singapore and I can enter my name, uh, mobile number. So I'm just going to give something, uh, you know, whatever. So we just try to fill out the information since this is a test environment. But of course, in the actual penetration testing, you want to fill in details as though you are a real client, as though you're a real customer coming to the site, doing a checkout, trying to understand the whole process of the site. So city again, I want to enter Singapore. Singapore again and click on submit. Okay, so once we have added all this information in, okay, I can click on to continue. Okay, so we're seeing all this information being placed into the database. But of course, we do not know what kind of database they're using. Could they be on Microsoft SQL? Could they be on MongoDB? Could they be on PostgreSQL? We're thinking. We're analyzing. We're trying to go through that process to know what kind of database they could be using. Okay, so we can identify based on certain behaviors coming from the web page. All right, so uh, let's select, say, for example, standard delivery. Click on continue. And of course, we have a wallet balance. We have a coupon. We have add payment options. We can click on credit card, for example. We can click on all these different details. And again, we are seeing all these different data. So let's go ahead and say, for example, add on some credit card details. So again, I want to enter um, 16 digits, all right, as part of credit card. All right, so we got 16 digits, so we can just select expiration date, month, and all those different details. Click on submit. So we got a cut that is ending with 5678 has been saved. All right, so we can see all these details. All right, so we got all this data, all this information. Okay, so we can review this order before it is being finalized. Check on that, and the moment you click on this, we realize that the continue button is now enabled. So let's go ahead and click on continue. All right, so we can see the delivery address, we can see the payment method, and we see all this data. So let's go ahead and click 
place your order and pay. All right, says thank you for your purchase. You can do a status update on track orders. Your order will be delivered. All right, so we see all these details, all this data. All right, and we can see there is a a button over here so this is for twitter twitter sharing and we have another button on print order confirmation so we can actually click on that and this creates a order form so sometimes these order forms are uh, being hosted inside the web application server so that means the web application server could create files and it could create in a particular folder and in this case for example if i go under the url all right, so we can see from the URL, so I can actually go on the magnifier, so it's easier for you to see. All right, so let me turn on magnifier for you. And we can see over here, we have the IP address, okay? And we have the port number, and we have the URL. So we got slash FTP. So let's go ahead and go into this particular URL. Let's see if we can find anything. All right, so we backspace on it and hit enter. And we realize we're in. We're inside a folder that is being used to store information. Okay, and we can see this order over here. If we click on that, this was the order that we had. Okay, this was the order that we had. And if I go back onto the web page, and if I actually log out from this page, okay, and if I go to log in and I can do a SQL injection that we have done before in one of the tutorials, okay, so I use a semicolon or one equal one all right so we use a single quote or one equal one for a semicolon and just enter anything for the password click on login so now I'm logging in with the administrator account and likewise we were there in the FTP right so let's go ahead and go back to FTP and are we still able to access it and the answer is yes the answer is yes we can see someone else's order inside the site all right so without even beginning our discovery of the directories inside the site to map out the site we already quickly identify one of the misconfiguration on the web application server and which is that they allow users to actually explore the directories inside the server okay so this is definitely a misconfiguration all right, so anyone who have access to this site will be able to access into this particular folder on FTP. So this again is going to be just one of the tutorials that we'll be going to expand further as part of our web application penetration testing series. So once again, I hope you've learned something valuable. And if you like what you've just watched, remember to like, share and subscribe to the channel so that you can be kept abreast of the latest cybersecurity tutorial. Thank you so much once again for watching.